I'll be surviving 200 days on one single block. Throughout these 100 days, I create tons of automatic farms and transform the entire end island. Let's see how far we can get in just 100 days. And we are back on our one block island. It has been a solid minute since I've seen this world. Thankfully, things don't change when you're offline, so I kind of remember everything. We've got our chest room, of course, our gigantic statue for the egg and the spiral rainbow that I built for some reason. Our lovely villagers and the iron golems who caused the iron farm to never work in the original 100 days. We've got our trees, our animals, and... Oh, I, I almost forgot about him. I... Wall sack was a loss I couldn't handle in the first 100 days. If you don't know, in the original video, I had a strider who I named Ballsack because he was blue and, and trivially because he was in the overworld. And eventually he died due to rain, so I, I no longer have him. But in these 200 days, I hope to mourn the loss of Ballsack. Obviously, while I was away, my farms grew because that's how that works. So I went ahead and harvested all of them. I'm pretty sure I have a ton of these items already and I don't really need it, except I think the villagers have to eat, so I guess I'll do it. The next couple of days I spent organizing chests, putting up item frames, putting items where they're supposed to go, making it so I have easier access to all of my stuff. In the previous 100 days I basically just put stuff in areas because I didn't think I would have enough leather from all the cows that I didn't have then. And now that I have a bunch of cows, it's pretty easy to organize all the stuff. So now that all of my items are organized, I wanted to add something to my island. I've been recently thinking about how I lost ball sack in the previous 100 days, so I'm gonna bring him back to life. No, I can't reverse time but I can go into the nether and get someone similar. I'm definitely not saying he's a replacement but I do need a ball sack on the island to continue it just seems right. Hello mister you're gonna come with me please follow me I need come on thank you. Okay so now I'm leading a ball sack all the way back to base which it's not a long journey but for this guy it's gonna be because he's shivering already do you know how hot it is in here man? Oh, I just realized I have to build a place for him. Oh, where am I going to put him? Oh, it better not rain. If it rains, I'm going to be so devastated. Okay, so to make sure that this ball sack doesn't die, I have to get him a roofed area immediately. So what I'm going to do is build a separate island for him. Not huge, but big enough for him. Okay, this should probably be good for him. I, th I think he's small. To make an area for him to fit in, I went ahead and made somewhat of an archway with four separate sides so that he could look around I guess then of course I roofed it because I don't want rain to kill this man all right I've already had one death in the family and putting him inside was pretty easy since I had leads but if I didn't it would it would have been horrifying that's why I had the original ball sack wandering around the island for so long and to make sure he stays in here death free I trapped him in with trap doors so that he cannot escape I think it looks really cool actually and it's definitely needed on the island so on day 5, I wanted to do something special for y'all. I took down my potato farm and completely removed it because I'm going to be needing this dirt for a project. I had hundreds of comments on the previous 100 days video that you can actually multiply dirt. So to give you all peace, I decided to make the coarse dirt, hoe it, and then turn it back into dirt, actually saying that you can multiply dirt on a one block world. Now knowing that I can do this, I've kind of come up with a gigantic idea I want to do for this video. But I don't want to spoil it yet, so I'm just going to mine the rest of this dirt and continue continue grabbing it throughout the episode. Okay, so I've noticed how annoying mining the one block has gotten since there's no way to sort the items and it's a constant mess trying to put it in all of the chests I've just organized. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a waterway where the blocks will flow into a chest system that I don't have to worry about sorting. I'm not making an auto sorter, I'm just making a way for the blocks to not fill up my inventory instantly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bubble column right here to boost it up onto the platform that we already have that I will line up with some chests so that I don't have to worry about building a new section. Hopefully all of these chests will collect every single block but I have a feeling it's going to fill up really quickly. I have a really big love hate relationship with this one block, I'm not going to lie. Okay, and now that it's complete, I have to somehow make a way for me to walk back up here. I guess we're going to change the island up a bit and get rid of these two staircases on this side so that I have ones that go up instead of down. And there! Okay, now we have staircases back up to this platform and we still have some to the end, so we should be good. Okay, so you know how the iron farm in the original 100 days decided not to work? Well, I'm going to move it over. 
To do that though, I have to clear out this tree area because I have literally no idea where else I could build this thing where it's in range. So I completely got rid of the oak tree area and had to move it somewhere different since I still need oak trees in the world. I then took down the middle spruce area because this is the only place I can think of to put it. And the spruce trees are huge so it took me a little while to take them down. Once that was done though, I rebuilt the oak area right here so now I have an empty platform for the iron golem farm. Speaking of deforestation, you should subscribe to the channel if you enjoy seeing this kind of content. Yes, I know the two are not related whatsoever. Also, if we get 50,000 likes on this video, I will do 300 days, and I have no idea what I'm going to do for 300 days, but you guys should give me some suggestions in the comments, and I'll see what I can make happen. Enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so in my previous iron farm, I did a cauldron design to collect all of the iron, and I'm redoing that now. I also did this design in 200 days duos, just because I feel like it's the best way for the lava to flow, me to collect all of the iron, and not burn everything down. I also added mossy cobblestone to it, just to look a bit more weathered, since it's technically supposed to be in this world a lot longer than this. And for the iron farm itself, it took me a little while to figure out what I was doing wrong in the original one, but most of you guys said that it was just because it was too close to the other villagers. So I remade the platform, got all the villagers in their separate areas, and then had to get a zombie. Now I was going to try and spawn one on the island somewhere by taking away the torches, but instead I just took one from my mob spawner. That was probably the dumbest idea I think I have ever had, because as soon as I tried to do it, the entire thing exploded and tons of mobs were coming down trying to kill me. Okay, no, I was just kidding. That happens later in the video. This one was for the iron farm. Things just kept killing the zombies I was trying to get. Thankfully, I did eventually get one all the way up to the top, and I was able to make a successful iron farm. Or so I thought. Day 12, I was watching my iron farm like a hawk after I had only just slept, and the thing stopped working when I slept. I have no idea what that means and I, I don't know how to fix it. So I went up there and tried to do everything I possibly could to reset the villagers or the zombie or something so that they would think they're back in danger and they need an iron golem. Turns out what I had to do was wait for the entire night until they tried to sleep. And once they did, I was able to go back to sleep and the iron golems were fine to spawn. So me sitting here the entire day just watching them waiting for an iron golem to spawn was absolutely useless. Okay, it's time to get back to mining the one block. We haven't done that in this 100 days, and I've just made an entire way to store all of the items, so I need to get back to it. While mining, I ran into a monster party, and it took like three minutes for me to run into one. Okay, I, I haven't even been here that long, and I already have to fight monsters. The worst part is that after I killed every single monster, because they're not hard anymore, I had to repair the thing I had just built. And as soon as that was done, I went, are you kidding me? Another one! I just rebuilt this thing! I literally hate this stupid block, why do I even mine you at this point? So instead of using the block to get materials like netherite or diamond, I'm gonna go into the nether. Okay, not for the diamond part, but for netherite. I still need some. I went ahead and upgraded my pickaxe with the only netherite that I had gotten so far, so it would be easier to find others. Then I headed into the nether, found a good spot to start mining, and, and did that. Did the, the mining thing. Since netherite mining is an absolute thrill and everyone loves watching it, I ended out with about 20 and then got lost. Like, I had no idea where I was, but I eventually found my way home. I should probably screenshot the cords of my portal, but I don't care enough. Day 18, this thing broke again, so I tried rearranging their workbenches so that they would see the zombie when they worked, and then they were able to kind of sleep from the glass being like a shield, and I just had to wait until night for this thing to work again. Thankfully, it functioned again later at night, but this thing is getting really annoying, working for a couple of days and then stopping. It's, I don't know what's going on. Day 19, the farms were fully grown, so I had to harvest them once again. At this point, I just throw out the seeds for the wheat because I have an entire double chest full and I don't need them. I should probably set up an auto composter for bone meal, huh? After that, I moved on to organizing the chests from the little bit of the one block that I mined. I mean, I mined it for like 10 minutes and I have four or five double chests full of random blocks. I honestly kind of hate this process. Maybe later I'll end up making a sorter so that I only get the blocks that I want or the ores that I want. I is that possible? I could try it. All right, now that things are organized, I'm going to get back to mining this one block. And it can't go wrong this time, right? I mean, I already had two monster parties happen. I, I'm i pretty much free and clear now to just mine. Okay, cool. I literally just rebuilt this thing 13 seconds ago. I hate this thing so much. I'm not mining you again. I'm mining you again. Thankfully, while mining the block the entire day, I wasn't given another monster party because that would just be annoying. 
Okay, now I'm never mining this thing again. Okay, earlier in the video, I mentioned that I had a big plan for these next 100 days. That includes me gathering a heck ton of dirt. And since you guys told me how to do that, I now have to go to the nether and get a ton of gravel. Thankfully, the nether has a ton of it around lava level, so I can just fly around and grab some as I go. Plus, having a high efficiency shovel really helps. This is only the first time I'm going to be here in the video, but I made a gigantic chunk on the nether's gravel supply. Now that I have a ton of gravel, I combined it with the dirt that I do have to make more coarse dirt that I can, well, in turn, turn back into dirt and then repeat the process over and over again. Now, it's definitely a lovely process watching me hoe dirt and then mine it and then hoe dirt and then mine it and then do the same thing over and over again for a few days. So I'm not going to skip through this. You're going to watch two hours or whatever it is of me. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to skip over it. And now I have almost a double chest full of dirt. That is a good accomplishment for a few days. I'm sure you figured out by now what the project is going to be for these 100 days. And that is to transform the end is to, and that is to transform the end into a base that I can actually survive in, that I can thrive in, that I have awesome things in. And I'm not standing on one block technically. So to do that, I'm going to have to go grab shulker boxes so that I have plenty of, well, room to put all the stuff I'm going to use to transform this place. Thankfully, shulker boxes weren't that hard to find since I already have an elytra and fireworks. And once that was complete, I had plenty of storage to carry over biome stuff as well as store things I tore down in the end. One of the biomes I'm going to be creating is a plains biome. So for that, I'm going to collect a lot of oak wood. I know that I can actually grow saplings, but to get the saplings as I'm running low, I have to cut down these trees over and over again. So I spent the day gathering as much wood as I needed for trades later so I could get the saplings I needed for the end. Also, can we talk about how annoying the large trees are? Why do they even spawn? It's the worst tree in all of Minecraft. I would rather break down a savanna tree. So the end right now doesn't have the best look. And to transform it, I'm going to have to get rid of the pillars, which is something I've never wanted to do. So the first thing that I did was break out the inside of one of the pillars I'll eventually be breaking down, saving me time and grabbed as much obsidian as I could because I was going to do the layout from the middle of the portal all the way to the obsidian towers. Basically, what I'm trying to do is keep four pillars separating each biome with their own obsidian trackway. And once I had all the obsidian to start the pathways, I realized that some of the pillars were in the way wrong spot and some of them just needed a little bit of course correcting. The one I'm working on now only needed one side shifted over a block, so that didn't take very long. However, I'm going to have to do this exact same process with other pillars, so I am not looking forward to that. Mining all that time in the end has made me realize I definitely need haste too, even if it only barely ups the obsidian speed. Unfortunately, I lack on every single material. My iron farm definitely doesn't have enough blocks for me, and all the emeralds I've collected have basically been put back into trade, so that was useless as well. However, while the iron farm does work when I'm on the island, I can also get emeralds by mining more trees, so guess where I was. Okay, yes, I committed more deforestation, but someone pointed out that technically I'm the one who plants the forests, so it's not really deforesting since there weren't any to begin with. However, it took me a couple days to actually get all of the materials required as well as let my iron farm work up the iron I needed for this beacon. So, so maybe it was a little bit of deforestation, okay? There was a long period of it. But eventually, I had gathered enough emerald, iron, gold, and diamond blocks, yes, all of them combined, to make a singular beacon. Definitely one of the most time-consuming things I've done so far. Maxing out an entire beacon wasn't done for nothing. I headed straight to the end and started working on taking down my first pillar. And these things are no joke. Thankfully, most of them in my end are actually quite skinny and short. I'm pretty sure I lucked out the most on this. I, however, started on the largest possible one in my area, just to make it a little bit easier for me going forward. Mining down one of these towers was not fun, but once it was complete, I was so much happier. I mean, I have a, a lot more to go, but one down. I went ahead and used that obsidian to finish off the pathways I'd created before. Since I'm going for the plus sign shape, I don't have all of the pillars completed on the plus sign axis. So I went ahead and made my own custom pillars with different heights from all the obsidian I've collected so far. It actually didn't take that long since I was making them hollow because there's no way I'm going to fill the entire thing in. And I can tell this is going to end up looking really cool, only having four pillars in here with different biomes being separated by these obsidian pathways. I'm really looking forward to it. Then I went ahead and worked on my next obsidian pillar. I still have to take all of the rest down, so I may as well get started. This time I started with a shorter one because I was already burnt out for the day. I continued the pillar process for a, quite a while, actually. I was going to say a few days, but it was way more than that. 
These things definitely take a lot out of me and they're a long time to complete, but thankfully almost all of mine were super short and skinny. I maybe had two or three that were large enough to take me a few days for that, but other than those, I had a breeze taking these down. Honestly, I would love to give you so much footage of how many obsidian pillars I took down, but the amount of boredom you would get from watching me mine obsidian for so long, I can't do that to you. So by the end of day 150, halfway through the video, we finally got through all of the pillars. Wow, I hope I never have to do that again. Okay, so now it's time to start working on our first biome in the end. I'm gonna try and keep each biome on the same level as the pathways so that there's some sort of consistency while walking up and down them. The first biome I'm working on consists of all of the dirt we've been collecting and much more dirt I'm gonna have to collect. I started by placing the dirt trying to replicate what it would look like in the overworld because that's what I'm trying to make. Since I don't have an overworld to actually go back to, I'm kind of making it here. As you can tell, I missed the grass. While doing the first layer, I had to mine out some of the end stone to keep up with the obsidian pathways I had previously created. I also had to extend those pathways later because I wanted them to go all the way off the map. At first, I was going to consider doing a circular shape from pillar to pillar, making one gigantic circle. But instead, by extending each layer, I, well, I made a lot more work for myself, but I also made the end look way cooler later. Plus, I wasn't going to mine out all of the end stones, so it would still be there with four different biomes, which didn't make much sense to me. By the end of day 152, I'd basically run out of all of the dirt I'd collected so far. It's looking really cool. I filled in what I could, but now I have to go gather more gravel, create more dirt, hoe it, mine it, and then place it in here. Yep, that's a lot of work to do. The first step to doing that is finding more gravel patches that I haven't yet mined. Once I found some, I started destroying my shovel on it knowing I'm gonna have to have a ton of it. Thankfully gravel is infinite, which makes dirt technically infinite now, uh, however it takes a really long time to get the gravel and dirt, so I mean it's it's infinite with a time frame. I collected another shulker full and inventory full of gravel before I headed back home. It was definitely worth basically having a double chest of gravel in hopes that I'm gonna have enough dirt to finish off the end. The second part to this is going back and hoeing all of the dirt and then mining it up and then hoeing it and then mining it so that we actually have real dirt and not coarse dirt. Surprisingly this doesn't take that long. I was actually watching a few episodes of Young Justice while doing this and it kind of passed the time pretty easily. If I knew any of you were fans of Young Justice I, I would go on a rant about how the show declined so quickly but um, I'll spare you the details. While I was finishing up the very last pieces of dirt I realized my shovel was about to break so I went ahead and added mending to it and then started grinding my mob farm. Unfortunately, while farming XP, I got a little too close and one of the creepers blew up the entire farm. Remember how I mentioned this part earlier? Y yeah, it's way worse than I expected. The first time I tried to go in and repair it, it was an absolute nightmare. Obviously, all of the mobs are one hit, so the skeletons were actually providing a lot of cover from the creepers for me. And I was getting a lot of music discs out of it. However, it was still a super scary experience and I was wearing my elytra because, again, if I fell off, I would be dead without it. However, it was an absolute constant mess trying to save this place and I really didn't know what to do. I eventually grabbed a bow and started killing all the mobs since they were one hit from afar. It made it a bit easier, however they were constantly spawning at this point, so the mess didn't really ever stop. I was able to safely place in some more blocks slowly but surely, finishing off the farm and rebuilding it once again. Still, super scary experience having all of these mobs coming after you. Now that I've gathered all the resources for the first biome, I went back to placing. This dirt seriously took a very long time. Thankfully, I did have enough for all of it, but still, this thing takes a long time to cover. The end island is much larger than I expected, especially since I'm doing the entire surface. So yes, this area that goes down, I'm still covering with dirt, okay? thats It's so much more area than I needed to, but I, I still wanted to do it for at least my first biome. But once all of the dirt was placed and the grass was slowly spreading, I could move on to the decoration of this landscape. For a plains biome, I want to add in a village, but I don't want it to be like a normal village. I want to customize it with only a few homes, some water areas, access for farms, that kind of stuff. So I started in by placing all the saplings that I currently have for oak, which wasn't really many. I mean, I could have built my own trees, but that would have taken a lot longer than just going back home and gathering more saplings later on, which I'll do in a minute. So I stuck with just placing and growing my own saplings. From there, I worked on some homes, water areas, some farms, that kind of stuff, but I ran out of materials a little bit later and had to go back for more. Still looking really cool right now. I mean, it's not done, but cool. 
To finish the build, I'm gonna need wood and saplings so I can plant trees as well as finish the house that I, I didn't finish. So I went over to my tree farm and started cutting it all down. Once I had it done, I was gathering as many saplings as I could, not only for my own farm here at home, but for the farm I, I get, it's not really a farm, it's more like the landscape I'm making in the end. Once I had the materials needed, I went back into the end and started working on the stuff I hadn't finished. I worked on the last house of the village, securing up three different areas people could live in, as well as I finished planting all of the saplings I had gotten on the top and the lower layers of the end. To finish off this biome, I also added in a ton of bone meal all around, adding in the grass aspect on top of grass. Okay, grass on the grass blocks. It, it makes sense. And now we officially have one of the biomes done, but we do not have time to stop. Once I got back home, I took all the shulker boxes that I used to build the first biome and emptied them completely out, sorting them back into my chests. Once that was done, I had to make a silk touch pickaxe because there was another biome I was going to work on, the nether biome. For the first part of the nether biome, I'm going to be doing the soul sand valley. Since my portal is right next to one, I grabbed some bone blocks and started working on gathering soul soil and soul sand. The sand was easy. The bone block, on the other hand, I had to fly around gathering as much as I could, not knowing how big of an area in the end I was going to be using. But once I hypothetically had enough for the soul valley, I moved on. The lovely crimson forest was my next humble abode. I started stripping down trees as well as all of their leaves and the fungus light or whatever that's called on the inside. I also used the silk touch pickaxe that I made to gather all of the ground uh, nylon, I think is what it's called. I have no idea. It's just red and different than netherrack, so I needed it. This biome probably took the longest because of, well, all of the trees that I had to cut down. And yes, I later realized that I didn't have to do this at all, and you'll see why in a minute. I repeated the same process over in the warped forest biome, which is basically a carbon copy of the warped forest, but just blue. I mined up the trees, its leaves, and the glowing fungus thing, just like I did in the red biome. Honestly, this is a cooler biome in my opinion. I really enjoy the blue and the aesthetic of this place, so I, I honestly rather this biome, but I guess they're both cool. After that, I grabbed up the nylon, which I actually don't know if that's the name of it. I never really checked, but it's the same thing as the warp, so I'm assuming it's still called nylon. This silk touch pickaxe definitely came in handy, and I'm glad I had it, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do it. So what am I talking about? After all of that, I still have one biome left to do. That is the lovely Basalt Delta. Probably one of the worst biomes in the nether. However, Soul Sand's probably worse. Uh, I don't know. I started by mining a ton of basalt, which I definitely won't have enough of because I never have enough of anything for this project, but hey, we'll mine it anyway. I took a large chunk out of the biome, however, the fact is, the nether is infinite, so this is nothing at all, but it's shulker boxes for me. After that, I moved to blackstone, which proved to be a lot harder than I expected. Basalt was kind of just everywhere, blackstone was underneath, and uh, filled with lava, apparently, but I, I got it. I know that four shulker boxes is probably not going to be enough stuff for the entire thing, but we'll start with one for every single biome and see how far we can get in the end. Now, to get the nether project started in the end, I had to finish off one of the obsidian pathways to push past the pillar that I already created for it. Basically, what I mean is I haven't done all of the pathways on the back half of them, and I needed to for this one so that I have an area to actually build the place in. Which means I had to use some of the, I don't know, thousands of obby blocks that I've already gathered to make a pathway which stretched over the side of the cliff and onto the platform that we currently use to get up into the end. And thankfully I did this because eh, I was using like a netherrack platform beforehand to get here and now I actually have an obsidian pathway. Much nicer. Then I used all of my lovely torches to light up an area so that I could get rid of all of the endermen because they are a huge problem when it comes to taking my dirt and now they're going to start taking my netherrack. So to make the nether inside of the end, I want to separate all of the biomes by some netherrack because that's kind of the main thing in the nether. What I'm going to be doing is making another plus sign shape, what are the odds, from each pillar all the way out off the island intersecting in the middle so I have four different quadrants for the four different biomes. Of course, all of the netherrack that I did have did not accomplish accomplish my goal and I'm gonna have to go get more later cuz what why wouldn't I I mean come on it's it's my build why wouldn't I be short on blocks hmm <laughs> before I went back to the nether however I started placing the warped nylium since I didn't have an entire shulker box of this stuff I had only nine stacks I decided to see how big of an area this could stretch also I have to say it's giving some massive color difference in the end and I'm really liking it here I'm super excited for you to see the entire build once it's done, but the nether biome itself is definitely my favorite. However, nine stacks of warp nylium was 
well, nothing, okay? I have to get way more, as normal, so I may as well go back to the nether and grab it. Well, I could do other biomes, and eh, we'll see. To remedy the issue, I went all the way back to a warped biome and gathered a ton more Nylium, hoping that this will cover the rest of the landscape I wasn't able to do before. I'm just happy Netherrack or the Nylium stuff. It, it's just blue Netherrack. Who cares? Insta breaks. Otherwise, I would have had to move my beacon in here, which would have sucked even more. Back in the end, I returned to placing all of the Nylium, filling up the first out of the four biomes. Definitely took a while, but this mix looks amazing with not only the netherrack, but the fact that we're in the end. While I was in the nether, I also gathered enough netherrack to continue the pathways off the map, creating those four separate areas. Once I finished up with a little bit of netherrack that I did have, um, unfortunately I, I ran out again, I started work on the basalt biome. This biome was definitely the hardest since I had to spam around blackstone pockets for lava, and then I was going to have to later spam basalt pockets for the basalt towers. And then I didn't even think about the fact I have to go gather how many buckets of lava for this place? Oh my word. To do this biome correctly, I did all of the blackstone and magma blocks first so that I could later fill in basalt areas because those were the harder ones to do. It honestly looks really, really cool. I don't know why I don't use blackstone more, but this is a really cool block. I definitely need to use this further. Now for the basalt part, I basically just ran around spamming as much basalt as I could, varying the heights and angles that this would come up because there's literally nothing else to do. Basalt is just random stacks of salt. And it actually started looking super, super good. I had no idea I could do this because I've never built a basalt biome before, but the first one worked out great. Once I had this place covered up to the brim with basalt, blackstone, and magma blocks, I had to definitely grab some lava from the nether to make this place whole. Ah, yes, the joy of life, grabbing lava from the nether. Holy cow, this place looks amazing when it's finished. Oh, we have so much more work to do, though. To finish off one of the easiest parts about this entire build, I went back to the nether to gather more netherrack. I still have a little bit more to put down on the island to make a full plus sign for all four different biomes. I definitely had enough netherrack to finish off every lane for once. I also added in the details on the side to make it look like it was leaking into each biome. I did that before, I didn't really mention it, but I really like it. The next biome I started working on was the Soul Valley. I wanted to try and keep every single block as soul soil because soul sand is slow and I don't really want to walk on slow so I, I hope that I had enough of the soul soil to fill in the entire area. Yeah, I, I didn't. And done. That's the entire soul sand valley completed with only soul soil so I'm not walking on slowness. Okay, now I have to do some bone block stuff. They kind of all have the same curve to them, so it wasn't too hard to master. I did a few different rib cages throughout the entire biome, and it looked pretty good, honestly. I was I was proud of this one. I mean, it wasn't it was no basalt biome, but it was good. Then I used the red nylium that I had collected previously, which was only about nine stacks, just like I had done with the warp biome. But I tried to lay it out as much as I could seeing how much of the land I could cover. I also wasn't gonna go down below on this biome because it takes way too long to do the entire bottom section of the end when it's just like cliffs and that kind of stuff. I know I did it for the plains biome, but I just do not have time in these current 100 days to finish the entire project while still going down below and doing the bottom of the end. Unfortunately, I definitely did not have enough of the Nylium to cover the entire end biome for the red section, so I had to go back another day and get more. Again, I am thankful that this stuff insta breaks with the pickaxes because I would have had a terrible time bringing my beacon in here and gathering this slowly, especially since I needed so much of it. And done. Now we have every biome kind of done. All right, the red and blue still need the trees and all the foliage, but everything has been laid out on the table. Honestly, this place is looking really, really cool. I am so happy with this area. Next, I started working on the mushrooms for the blue biome. I, I'm going to call them mushroom, they're tree mushroom. Trush, trushrooms? I don't know. Anyway, I started hand making them because I didn't know that you could actually bone meal them, which is, surprise, surprise, another thing I could have done to save me time, but didn't. So, yeah, I started working on the blue tushrooms <laughs> and ended up doing a ton of small ones, a ton of big ones, just trying to vary in size since I really don't know how to make these things, and I think it turned out really nice, actually. However, I was able to speed up the red biome by only using bone meal and just bone mealing the mushrooms, which, again, didn't know was a thing until I accidentally did it in the blue biome, and now I can just do it in the red one. So, 
I mean, I saved myself some time, but I, I could have probably saved another day and a half after building all of those mushrooms, but still, it looked really, really nice when the entire section for the nether was done. We had the red biome, the blue biome, the soul valley, and the basalt section. It took a ton of work to get this far, but I really love how everything came together so, so nicely, and I can't wait to work on the next biome. For the next biome I'm going to be doing, I have to head to the outer end. Basically, I'm going to be gathering these end berry flower blossom. I have no idea what these are. I'm just going to shoot them with a bow and collect them all. And then I'm going to place them in one of the sections for the end and make the end biome in the end. I know it's a little cliche, but uh, it makes sense, right? Like, you have the nether, you have the overworld, and you got the end. The fourth biome, however, I think you guys will really like, and it is a big old meme. So let's get through this end biome, and I'll show you that. These berries were actually not that hard to gather, it just took a while to get enough for the gigantic section of the end that I'm going to be filling with them. I had to go back and forth and gather more when I ran out, but eventually we had finished off the end biome of the end. We have to wait until all of these grow up into giant stalks and it will look amazing. I actually want to fly through all of them because I think it would be cool to like get one of the max rockets and maneuver through all of the small gaps. Okay, so the last biome I'm going to be doing is actually one block itself. So to do that, I'm going to need some sheep, and I think I'm going to take them over to the end where we have all the grass so that they can grow a gigantic family, and I can shear them for the next 10 days. I went ahead and put them in some fences, and then I will do this later a few more times with a lot more sheep because there is no way I'm going to have enough in 10 days. Okay, I, I do, but it's, it's close. I cut it close. Then with all of the wool that I had gathered throughout the previous 100 days and this 100 days, which wasn't much, I started working on the clouds, okay? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit weird, but basically the biome I want to do has clouds and a sky on the bottom and then a one block on top of that. So the amount of clouds I was able to place down with all the wool that I had gathered was pretty much nothing. So that means I have a lot of gathering to do in the next few days. So for the next few days, I went back and forth between the end and the overworld collecting all my sheep. I had like four pens at this point. I was trying to save up enough to at least get the clouds done before I dyed all of these guys light blue, which was another issue. I went back to mining the one block after like 70 days of not mining it because I need more lapis and or bone block for the light blue dye. Light blue dye is obviously made out of white dye and blue dye and I can only get blue dye from either flowers or lapis, so I needed more lapis or flowers, which I don't think you get flowers from a block. So I basically sat here while all of my sheep were doing their thing, regrowing the wool and trying to get me enough blue and or white dye to finish off my last biome. Back in the end biome, I went ahead and extended the sheep's pen. All three different areas extended because there was no way I was going to have enough wool in time. Once the cages were extended, I switched them all to blue and started shearing them the best I could as soon as I could. There was very little time left and I had to shear like thousands of sheep for thousands upon thousands of wool blocks. And that's what I did for a few days. I went back and forth between shearing and placing the light blue wool to try and get a sky effect on the ground. Of course, I didn't shear every single sheep because I still needed the white ones for the clouds, but those were finished off pretty early on. Now all that was left was the sky, and it was actually quite easy to finish off. I basically AFK'd for a couple of days only shearing sheep, and that's literally all I did, and by the time I was done with that, I had enough wool to finish the sky. And it does look really cool. Now, I did end up trying to make the one block out. Now, we were on basically the last day of the video, and I was going to try and make the one block out of either blocks or wool or something like that, but I definitely didn't have enough resources for the time that I had left. So instead, I placed a block, because, I mean, it, it is one block, right? That's what I'm going for, one block? That's, uh, uh, get it, joke, meme? Okay, cool. And this was our progress after 100 days of work. We have so many biomes on the end island and it looks amazing. I honestly just pray that the Endermen don't steal every biome from me because that would, that would suck so much. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video and I hope you did thoroughly enjoy. Make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel or just come back and watch on the regular. Also, make sure to go check out the merch. I'll be dropping some new stuff soon, so keep an eye on that. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out, everybody.